props, props, props. So, so this was, um, it took two years for the uh, high priest corn to decide I was cool enough to be rebaptized. Hmm. And this is part of why. This was. Um, I like that you said that you were cool enough to get rebaptized. Because that's, you know. Yeah. It's, uh. <laughs> this is how I celebrated <laughs> returning to the church. The place where I worked. I worked in a place called um, Cyclops Cafe. Mm -hmm. And one of the waiters there is a really great photographer. So we did a photo exhibition called Mormon Fag. Wow. And um, that wasn't my idea of a title, but it was, it was fun. It was, it was fun because I got to tell my bishop about it and offer him a ticket to the Mormon Fag. And he, he got Whoa. so annoyed. But we had his second counselor was there with his wife. Wow. We had... Um, Two other members there, two missionaries. We handed out two Book of Mormons, books of Mormon. Mm -hmm. But so what it was, wow. this is this is the way I used to dress every day. Mm -hmm. And um, this is another photo from the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. from the. Uh, well, I've got my what I've got on my shirt. Oh, the ensign, yeah, with jo is, Joseph is, Smith. Is that day. is that? Wow, let me see. Because. And this is how I, I used to wear this one to church That's all awesome. the time. It's because, you know, I wanted to be a punk rock Mormon. Right. And I just thought, this is so rad. It is. And it's such a lovely... Wow. Um, so Joseph Smith and so Oscar Joseph Wilde Smith. Well, and so it was, Robert Sarsen. They were They were all these life-size photos of me in total outrageous drag. And then there was one that was black and white. And it was me looking very LDS. Mm. And that was supposedly yeah, yeah, yeah. what I was going uh, to transform into. It didn't work out that so way. So it was like white shirt and tie and Yeah, and I've jacket. got the photo somewhere. I've got it on my computer, actually. Uh -huh. So um, so that was the idea you were going to transform so, into that. So, and so that, you know, the, the church had a bit of a problem with, with that photo exhibit. Mm -hmm. and, and then this book, this book had just come out. As as I was re returning oh, cool. to the church, and it's got some cool. gay erotica stuff in it, and uh -huh. um, and so I explained to them, you know, that I was really proud of having written that book. Yeah. And this, and one of the high priest said, "Well, how can an LDS man be proud of having written a book with gay sexual matter?" And I said, "Well, a Mormon didn't write that book." A, a gay punk transvestite wrote that book, mm. you know, right. and, and, uh, did, but that, did the, that help him? <laughs> did that it still took him two years to, uh, to, to let me be baptized, but oh, that wow. was cool. You know, it was frustrating wanting so to, uh, yeah, because you partake of the sacrament, and I had to wait for two years because I had such a great testimony. But right, you know, this is you know the the church is oh yeah wow. is always in my books. Like this yeah. is I had no idea the art. This is a Swedish artist, a Swiss artist, and uh, I had no idea he was going to put the Mormon temple wow. in my haunted little yeah <laughs> setting. It's interesting sort of gothic. So it's Mormon, so it's sort of Mormon gothic. Yeah. So it's 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 cool. Yeah. Fusing fusing your two aspects of your identity. And yet I don't I don't like to think of myself as representing any kind of latter day saint. Right, right, right. You just, just are you. I'm just myself. Exactly. So Yeah. Which part of it is Latter day Saint? Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like I'm every woman. I'm queer. I'm punk. I'm LDS. I'm a horror writer. I'm a mm -hmm. transvestite. Yeah, but it's I'm, all authentic. I'm old. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so all that's because you you felt an impression after the missionaries came. And it found was you to, amazing. Yeah, I never expected to return to the church. Do you want to sit down? Sure. sure, sure, sure. <clears throat> um, I never. Never ever expected to return to the church. I was living in the central area, um, 
of Seattle, mm -hmm. and they had just opened the area up to the missionaries. This is in... I think 2003. Okay. I think. It might have been. I can't, rem I can't even remember now when I was rebaptized. I've got the little thing somewhere. Yeah. <coughs> it's been a while ago. Um, and they had just opened the area up to missionaries. And so a couple elders knocked on my door. And I've always felt a kinship because I served a mission. Mm -hmm. And no matter how far I strayed, I never become anti-church. It mm -hmm. was just, I could, you know. Well, had, the church was I, a little anti-you. Yeah, you know, they. <laughs> they kicked you They out. couldn't handle me, and so I went away. Right. And, um, but I, I just never thought I would return there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I believed in God. So the elders knocked on my door, and I said, well, come back next week. I'll get the place cleaned up. <laughs> and, um. I'd love to take the discussions to see how you do it these days. Hmm. And that was my excuse, but I think deep down I was craving um, a contact with, with the church, with Latter-day hmm. Saints. Um, all my l Ever since leaving the church, I've felt this void, and I think that's part of why I've... I, examined all these various lifestyles, some mm. of which have stuck on to me. Mm -hmm. I was always looking for something that was missing. Yeah. When I returned to the church, I found it. Yeah. But it came as a total surprise. So interesting. So when they, they began to teach me the discussions, really two really nice elders. And um, then I went to church and it was comp I was completely freaked out by church. It was to be in that atmosphere um, was so alien. It just felt so alien. Mm. And um, even though you, even though I've been raised LDS, it, it just, it, it's, you know, it's I had I had strayed so far. I had, you know, I was going to work in mini skirts. I was totally out. I had dabbled with being a street prostitute for mm. a few months my, when I first came out, mm -hmm. all these things. And I just felt so far from the church. But wow. after the third discussion, I think the elders saw something or they, they were clued in by the Spirit and they just said, why don't you pray about it? Wow. So they left and I thought, oh, what the hell? <laughs> what, what can happen? So... <laughs> So I let's pray about it. What the I hell? got on my knees and I thought I don't know what to say. I don't know. So I just I just I asked, okay, God, are you real? Are you there? Hmm. And it was almost instantaneous. Wow. I just start. I started to shudder. It wasn't shivering. I was shuddering. I just felt like I was drenched with ice water. Um. I felt the spirit. I didn't feel the Spirit of God m as much as I felt the Spirit of my grandfather, my father's father, who oh, wow. took me through the Salt Lake Temple when I got my endowments just before f going to Ireland for my mission. Oh, wow. He was a saintly man, just a wonderful guy. But I also felt the Spirit of my father. It, it felt like they were in the room with me. Wow. And then I... It's almost as if I heard the voice of God and He said, I am real. I exist, the church is true, come home. Mm. And I started weeping. Mm. I was, to because, you know, uh, some of my gay and punk friends say, you know, well, you've been brainwashed. Mm. It's like, no, I had no intention, absolutely, of ever returning to the church. There yeah. was no, whatever happened, it was real. Yeah. It was a spiritual, it was an epiphany, or whatever the word yeah. is. I'm a writer. I don't know the word, um, <laughs> but it definitely came it, from it, outside of you. It, it yeah, it wasn't yeah. it. It wasn't something that I was seeking. Mm -hmm. It came to me, and it, I was, I was angry. I was pissed off. I said, "No, I don't want my testimony back. That's not what I'm. Right. That what this is about. I'm just I and yeah. But part of the part of being a punk rocker for me is you embrace everything 
that you are. Mm -hmm. And people that don't like it can dro drop dead. You know? Right, right. And I, so I, I just thought, I, I, I just, I couldn't visualize myself returning to the church, but I think at that moment I knew I had to. Wow. Because if I didn't, I would be a gutless hypocrite. Because I knew. Right. I had an answer to a prayer. I knew the church was true. I knew that God existed. Wow. And I knew that God wanted me to be a Mormon again. Jeez. And I just, it's like, oh man, this is screwed up. What? <laughs> How am yeah. I going to do this? Yeah. And because uh, I didn't want to change anything about my lifestyle. I loved the way I was living. Mm -hmm. And um, that's quite the call. So, I, yeah, so, so I, I returned. I, I had far more hair back in those days and my hair was pink and green and <laughs> all this stuff and sometimes the glitter from the previous night's drag would would <laughs> be on my suit because it yeah. would be fall out of my hair into my you know and they didn't but the ward I went to it was Seattle fifth ward they were the perfect ward for me because yeah. they were just extremely loving accepting and patient cool um, very few of them were noticeably freaked out mm. and um, I just think they were excited that such a lost lamb <laughs> was returning to the fold yeah. and yeah. Um, and it became I, I just I, I loved going to church three hours a day wasn't nearly long enough I would have to go back for wow. baptisms or wow it was just uh, what was it, it like the fellowship of the saints or here just it was the it was the fellowship but mostly it was realizing that I had found the thing I lost wow and that was being a member of the church wow. and I sometimes think well this is more of a, an emotional connection and cultural connection than a religious connection because hmm. I'm not a, I'm not naturally righteous mm. I'm rebellious right you're a punk yeah, yeah. and um, so being righteous is a lot of work yeah and um, but but I just, I just, I just so loved the entire. I, I loved having a testimony again. It, it all, it, it began to feel more and more familiar. Mm -hmm. And um, and the ward was so cool and so accepting. And um, and then I, 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 I really enjoyed working with the missionaries again. That some mm -hmm. of the missionaries would take me out. Um, tracking and it was because it was just like remembering yeah. when I was I began my mission in Ireland I was in Ireland I think for about 16 months hmm. and then I because of health reasons I was transferred to the desert and I ended my mission in the Arizona Las Vegas mission Wow yeah. and um, big difference yeah it was a huge <laughs> difference huh. but um so in um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm still going back to like trying to imagine like the missionaries knocking on your door and coming in and you know you were probably a bit punk, punked out. I was I was way punk. Um, yeah. I didn't wear any makeup when they when they came, mm -hmm. um, but they would sometimes they would see me on the streets because mm -hmm. I I deliberately would work in punk rock cafes, places where I. I could dress like yeah. you know like that, yeah, yeah. and um, and then of course f when we d when we did the Mormon fag exhibit, I was totally freaked out. Mm -hmm. um, Meaning by your I was I was I was ex extremely dragged up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know I was in total drag all the way up. So yeah, so you you have this impression you come back to church and you have good experiences, but you you had been excommunicated and uh -huh. and so. Um, so you're like, okay, I went back in the church, but they were like, no, it was, yeah, sure. it was like, I have a testimony again. I need, I need, and I've, 
had an answer from God, and God, I've made a commitment with God. I will return to the church, and I will never leave the church. Mm -hmm. Even if they kick me out, I'll just keep on going. Wow. Um, I never... I thought, if I if I return, I'm still going to be such a freak mm -hmm. that eventually they're <coughs> going to say, you know... You, it's like my 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 bishop. T it was he was trying to explain to me why I can't dress in drag anymore. And he says, "It's if I if I'm in a restaurant and I have a cup of cocoa and they serve it in a coffee cup, I can't <laughs> drink it because it'll look like I'm drinking coffee." It's the, uh, so I go, "Oh, so if I dress like a drag queen, it means I'm sleeping with boys." But mm -hmm. I've been celibate by my choice since 1985. Mm -hmm. I don't like sex. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so I said, well, that's lame and dishonest. Right. And, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> but I, the church is very, the church seems very uptight about ima images, personal, mm -hmm. uh, personal appearance, appearance <coughs> and things like that. <clears throat> and yeah, and, so when and so, uh, so I expected, I said, I'll return to the church, but they'll probably kick me out again because I know right. I'm, I'm addicted to <laughs> Chanel lipstick, and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's just right. things I won't give up. Right. I said the thing I, the, you know, the things that if you're going to belong to a religion, then you keep that religion's commandments, and the the commandment for for gay men is Celibacy. gay Mormon boys don't get laid. That's it. You know? <laughs> there you go. So I don't get laid. <laughs> Good. But I'm still fabulous. Right, so. you are. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I knew it was going to be difficult. and um, Yeah, to say the least. But Especially because you I'm had just, been I'm kicked out before because of being fabulous and, well, yeah, well I was, I was Well, I was excommunicated. I was still a virgin. I mm -hmm. had not yet had sex. Mm -hmm. I was kicked out just for saying I'm gay. Yeah. It wasn't for any action. It was for being gay. Yeah. I think now the church has, th I think they're trying to be more right. open-minded about there are gay members mm -hmm. who are celibate. Um, yeah, I mean, I work at BYU and came out very publicly. And I'm still there and nobody's asked yeah. Uh -huh. Need to Are you still in the church? church? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Because, I mean... Times have changed. I love the church. And, you know, when you're, when you're raised LDS, you just, you've got that yeah. Mormon DNA in you. And, mm -hmm. and um, you want it in your life. Mm -hmm. And so I've... Can't take that away from so you. So my, you know, like my big fear of doing this or doing my videos on YouTube mm -hmm. is that, you know, s some big wig dude in Salt Lake is going to see that and say, okay, we can't have this person. Mm -hmm. Because in some, you right. know, like in one right. of my videos, you know, I had, I, had, I had my home teacher, he and I cool. were talking about the Book of Mormon and bearing our testimony of the Book of Mormon. I and seen then the one. next day I was, I was a drag queen, mm. you know. Praising Barbara Streisand or something, <laughs> you know, it's like I love it. It's um, and then because I write horror, I like to do a ghoulish, scary makeup mm -hmm. and then promote my books. Yeah. So it's like for me, YouTube is theater. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and promotion so, and yeah. Um, that makes good sense. Well, you know, but more and more, the church also is becoming aware of maybe some of these patterns in the past of mm -hmm. kicking people out just for saying, th you know, just for saying this is who I am, but. Now they're like, well, that doesn't. I went through. PR wise, that's I went through good. therapy, hmm. and part of the therapy was to read this pamphlet by one of the apostles. This was in the seventies, hmm. and it was that pamphlet that convinced me to leave the church because hmm. every reference to the gay person was they used the word pervert. Yeah, every single time the pervert, hmm. the pervert, the pervert, the pervert. Mm -hmm. and I was so offended, hmm. and I said. This wasn't written by a man of God. This is mm. crap. Mm. And I don't want to belong to this religion anymore. And um, mm. 
I was at that time becoming really rebellious. And I'm an exhibitionist. Mm. And part of being queer is to be visibly, obviously queer. Mm. And so most guys, when they attend their excommunication court, they're trying to preserve their dignity and they dress right. up in their suit and tie. I wore lipstick, a little bit of eyeshadow, a little faggy top and a little brooch. And you kept it tasteful. This, you know, I was, yeah. I was Miss Thang. Right. And, and it was so <laughs> funny because, you know, you're sitting there in that room and there's like rows and rows of white guys. Yeah. And then they say, Brother Pugmar, are you gay? And I, I was going, yes. It was like I was high drama queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Feminism. And then you know, and they said, you know, we you will, you know, you will be excommunicated. I said, thank you. You know, it was like <laughs> I was, you know, yeah. I wasn't because uh, because I was angry. I was so sure. angry. At, I was angry at, you know, that they didn't know me, and mm -hmm. I was I I had not had sex, and mm -hmm. why was I being kicked out of the church? Um, yeah. so I was just really pissed off at the church. That's sad. They were overlooking you, the human being, and just seeing... Yeah, it was just, I was branded mm -hmm. for something of which they had no comprehension. Right. They just knew their their slanted, ignorant prejudice concerning mm. what they thought gay people were. Yeah. And um, mm. so, you know, I think they're trying now to be more open-minded, but they right. will never... I don't, I don't expect the church to change change what i don't expect the church to find suddenly say you know um gay men can marry in the temple just like you know like right. black people suddenly mm -hmm. were able to hold the priesthood yeah. i i don't expect that and i i expect the mormon church to be what they are mm, and you what don't they think this one's gonna change they, yeah i mean the church has changed is the church has evolved over mm -hmm. the years culturally but culturally and and, and and even the fact that you know policies have yeah. you know but the core doctrine doesn't you know that's eternal mm. and my so do you feel like your homosexuality is sort of against the core doctrine or how do yeah. you really i think god is homophobic whoa okay i explain what do you mean um i think I, I don't think homosexuality has a place in God's plan of salvation. Mm. I think his plan of salvation is is eternal marriage. Heterosexual. Heterosexual mm -hmm. and um, bring spirit children into, and, and all the other esoteric stuff that I don't want to get into mm. that, mm -hmm. that, you know, is not pure doctrine, but is, sure. you know. Um, so, 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 so I, I think that the God, God is obsessed with His plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. That is His thing, mm -hmm. and we don't really fit into that plan. Right. Um, so, what does that do to you in terms of how you feel about? I, your future I have no idea. I, I have no idea what this my spiritual future holds. Yeah. I hope that I'm gay forever. Mm. I don't want, you know, because some people have said, well, you know, when you're in the next world, you know, you can get married. And, right. And I go, no, 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 I don't. I, I want to be gay forever. Yeah. I love being gay. Oh. I love it. Nice. It's who I am, and I, I celebrate it. Yeah. You've probably done a lot of work to be okay with it, too, to yeah, love it. Yeah, it took you a know? long time to accept myself because I was raised... <clears throat> you know, I'm a child of the 1950s, and mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so 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 I work. so I so I think if you're going to belong to a religion, um, if you're going to be a part of that religion, you have to accept some other mindset, mm. and. Um, But I don't. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that God is homophobic. I'm mm -hmm. saying, I can't. I can't personally see him as anything else because of the way the because, religion because of presents. because of everything in his plan of salvation is seems 
um, directed toward eternal heterosexuality. Right. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Boring. <laughs> um, so, so, you think you're uh, so I don't know what, what, you know, and it's not important for me to know. What is important for me as a gay Latter day Saint is to make it clear that I love my sexuality, even though I am not sexual, mm -hmm. and to love my religion and to honor my religion by keeping the commandments. Wow. That's, because that's, why, why, why else, if you're not going to keep the commandments, then why BLDS? Hmm. I mean, you can, I think some people, I don't know. I, I don't know that many gay Mormons. Hmm. Uh, in the my other ward, we had a gay man that, that converted to the church. He lasted about a year and mm -hmm. then he he left because mm -hmm. he said, you know, I'm being denied a really important part of my life. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't feel, I can be LDS and I don't have to deny anything. Mm -hmm. I can be everything I am and still be LDS in my mind. Right. You know, the church may, right. You know, the church may have other ideas. They may think, oh, you're living with a boy mm. that you love, but you're not lovers, but mm -hmm. still, right. that doesn't, you know, that doesn't look good. You know, mm. you're living with a gay punk boy, <laughs> and uh, you want to live with him forever. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a marriage. Mm -hmm. um, a celibate marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the church might have problems with that. And if they do... <sighs> then I will let them have that problem. And, right. and whatever they decree, whatever my priesthood leaders decree, I'm fine with if mm -hmm. it means... See, I'm, I'm beginning to feel and sound defensive because mm. I'm, I'm always preparing right. for, for the phone call where, um, Brother Pugmer, could you come to the uh, <laughs> stake... Mm -hmm. You know, and um, we want to talk to you about some things. Right. I'm I'm always waiting for that because you've experienced it before. Yeah, and and I'm going. I feel like how are how how can they? It is it astonishes me that the church can accept me as I am. Mm. Yeah, because you accept it for what it is. Right, <laughs> and um. And I see, I see myself as an extreme case. And, Maybe a little. And I, I, so I, you know. But it seems like um, sort of the, the relationship you've gotten into with the church this time around is a kind of very different, different times. And also you're, you came into back into the church saying, I'm here, I'm queer, I'm fabulous. I'm here, I'm queer, I'm LDS, get used to it. Right, Exactly. Yeah, yeah so I, they're... It, you know, I, when I... When I returned, when I moved him back in with my mother, and then I went, I returned to the ward that mm -hmm. I grew up in. Wow. It used to be the Seattle Fourth Ward, mm -hmm. and so I, I went to the the uh, the meeting house that my father and I helped to build in the 1960s when members were still able to do that. Yeah, wow. And um, some of the guys there remember me when I was a teenager. Cool. And I said, okay, I'm not going to come out to anybody. Mm. I I don't want to be a gay Mormon in their eyes anymore like I was in Fifth Ward. I just want to be Brother Pugmar. Mm. And then I blew it at <laughs> in September fast and testimony meeting. I bore my testimony and I came out. Wow. And I don't know why I did that. I just I just uh and but it it it, and it, it, it just it just felt right. It just yeah. felt right to say, you know, I left the church for 25 years when I came out as gay, and um, then I returned to the church. Okay, so so you you stood up and and then you didn't plan on it, but you came. I didn't out. plan on it. Well, I. No, I did. I I didn't plan on it. I wasn't. I didn't even plan on burying my. I didn't even know it was fast and testimony. I it, it had Ooh. been almost a year since I've been to church because I can't leave my mother alone. Mm. She can't stand. She can't walk. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I sometimes don't trust Ghost Boy mm. to be alone, to to 
to to want to take care of her. Yeah. And but I I got so I w- I was just so fed up with missing church. Mm. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, I'm going to church. Yeah. So I I just so I just told told him I'm going to church. Sit with mom. And I went. I had no idea. It, I didn't remember. Oh yeah, the first Sunday of September is going to be fast Sunday. Mm. So I just I just really needed to be in church. Yeah. So it was none of I, I had no idea, and then I just felt like I needed to bear my testimony, and then it just all came out. But it people were, you know. After after the meeting, people came up and you know, shaking my hand, and then, mm-hmm. and it's I think it's the lost lamb. There's a lost lamb syndrome in the church, mm, you know, yeah. of people that have left mm-hmm. and come back. Yeah. Um, and they want really, to it out. just really pleases members when we, those of us who have strayed, come home. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, interesting. So there's in, there's that element in the church. Yeah. And in your testimony, you said I I left before because I'm gay, but I'm I want to come back. I I I, I basically I'm said, um, you know, I went to on a mission to Ireland. Um, shortly after my mission, I came out as gay. I was excommunicated and stayed away from the church for 25 years. And I said, and then one day those some missionaries, some elders knocked on my door, and then I looked at the audience and I said. Those evil elders, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone just kind of smiled, uh-huh. and, and I said. And then two years later, I was rebaptized, mm. and then I could see everyone go, oh. you know, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like he's back, yay, <laughs> she's back. Yeah, but um, yeah, it, and it took two years from the time it took that you two years of me really wanting to return to the church. Part of that was because I was still. Dressing the boy George drag, yeah. and um, and the church leaders and were they uncomfortable just, with that. They just, they just, you know, you can't, you know, you can't. This isn't. We can't deal. <laughs> we, they couldn't deal with it. Right. And I'm going. And and it was funny because there was kind of the when I first returned the um, the bishop's second counselor was kind of a punky guy, and he had he had kind of blue streaks in his hair. Oh, wow. And then I, I helped him do something one Sunday, and he was wearing um, sandals, and he had black nail polish on his toenails. Awesome. And so I brought that up when, when during, because I had a series of interviews with mm. the high priest quorum. I said, well, if, if the bishop's second counselor can wear black nail polish, why can't I wear lipstick? Mm. And they... But that was me being, you know, bad. In their eyes. Yeah, that yeah. was me being Optimate. confrontational yeah, or yeah. something. And But he's like, you know, what is the hang-up? It's just lipstick. Right. Yeah. I love, it's, I've loved wearing makeup mm-hmm. since what, since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, It's creative, it's an art. And, it's yeah, and... And then my first job was working in a horror museum because I've always loved monsters. Mm. And my job was dressing up in various makeups, monster makeups. And um, so makeup has always, and then I got into theater. And and that's kind of the way I'm gay Mm. is, should I put on some makeup so you can see the way I do it? Yeah, I'd love to Let's see it. Let's go upstairs, okay. and I'll get fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it won't on. take it won't take too long. You're already fabulous, but well, more, more fabulous. More fabulous. Sweet. Sweet.